I'm George Hussey, Dr. 914 from Automobile Atlanta, and this short video is called Body in Blank. Years ago, one was able to order a brand new bare 914 body to fix a rusty car or a crash victim. In fact, Porsche encouraged it because they didn't want some of their cars improperly repaired or maybe running down the road to like a crash. So you would order a brand new body, you would switch all your parts after painting it, of course, and then Porsche would come out and re-tag it for you, and then you'd have your brand new redone 914 back. Well, unfortunately, probably by 1988, the last body was sold and they had no more, and so we dream and long for the days of buying a brand new body, switching the parts like everybody wants to these days, not having to deal with the terrible rust that takes hundreds of hours to fix. So I'm going to show you this body that is from a 914.6 that we are welding and welding and welding upon. Thankfully, the 914.6s are worth spending hundreds of hours upon, and I will show you the differences in the bodies. The early cars were much more rudimentary than the later ones, very much less caulked and less soundproofed and less reinforced than the later ones. So when you buy an early car, you get more rattles and rolls and creaks and groans than you do with a nice uh, link car. The ultimate for us would have been a 75, 76, 914, six cylinder with maybe a 2.7 in it back then. It would have been really the ultimate car. But this being a 76 cylinder has all of the early attributes, I don't think I'd say attributes, that I'm going to point out. First of all, we can start with the front panel. The front panel of this car can be identified by first the small bump on the side next to the headlight box. Notice the two holes here for the serial number. All 914s had a serial number plate right here from the 70 through 74 models and the 75, 76 as they moved it to the bulkhead. What has happened, many were crashed and the serial number plate folded up and then they lost it. So the factory thought, well, we'll move it here because if it's crashed to here, then it's probably total, but crashed in here not, but the serial number will remain intact if it was there. This hole is plugged on the six cylinders, is for the uh, tire pressure operated windshield washer on the early cars. The panel bump here is small for the 70, 71 and 72 models. It became larger for crash standards in 73 and 4 and then very much wider for crash standards in 75 and 76 reinforced. These front panels are no longer made so when you buy a front panel it's the later model and one can instantly identify the fact that the front panel has been replaced. So this is a 70, 71, 72 front panel. The, the front holes in the panel uh, we have thought were maybe designated for a front oil cooler that were put in some of the GTs. That's why they drilled these holes in here. They were later discontinued for the 75, 76 models as the 914 six cylinders were long, long gone. The headlight box is longer on the 70 through 74 models and then shortened on the 75 and the 76 models to hold a bumper shock. One can instantly tell because of superseded parts when one of these is fixed again because when the new headlight boxes were available, they were all shortened, the 75, 76 variety, and welded in by body shops paid by insurance companies. So that's an instant way of spotting. The fender has been spot welded on by the factory, and you can see how nice these spot welds are, and it's all uniform one can tell right away if the fender's been replaced because usually body men spot weld on the top of these joints. So by seeing nice uniform spot welds from the machine, you can ensure that this has had still the original factory fender, although back here you can see where water sat under the hood seal and rusted it out. This hole for the antenna is in the wrong position. Too many times the dealer sent the young kid out to install a radio in the car and thought, well, the closest place to where the radio antenna hole is is right here. Some even drilled it in the count. The correct place is over on the back 
of the left front fender, there's a factory template for that. So if you redo your car, don't, we're going to weld this up, don't keep the incorrect radio antenna hole, put it where it should be. This other fender, you can see, has also been factory spot welded. And if you looked at the spot welds, notice how the inner fender well and the fender right here don't match and they're off substantially really. These Volkswagen Porsches weren't built so precisely like 911s that they couldn't be off and the guy had to fudge this a little bit. So even though this is a factory fender, it's not perfectly mated to the inner fender well. And we looked at this for a while thinking, has this had a fender put on it? But we did further examination up underneath and knew that this was a factory fender installation. But again, it is off a little bit. If you see, again, the spot welds on the top, not on the side. If you see the spot welds on the top and maybe not as well spaced, you know the fender has been replaced. And again, hood seal water sitting here, captured, rusted it out. We make the panels to fix this now, thankfully. So actually with a good welder, we can easily fix this. The cowl section here, these were basically the same except in 72, for better ventilation, they added two side vents, which we call air conditioning vents, just as a friendly term that's not air conditioning. But it modified this front panel to hold those. So you'll see that the 70 two through 76 models had a different cow panel here. And over here, these are three factory holes that the four cylinders don't have. These are holes for the windshield washer pump. Six cylinders had an electric windshield washer where four cylinders had the tire actuated pressure pump. And then the, the well for the gas tank is down in here. You can see the factory had been planning to put sway bars in here because the bodies were stamped for these, but sway bars didn't occur until 72 six cylinders and 73 through 76 914 four cylinders. Rack and pinion goes through here. Notice it's centrally located. They could have actually made this left or right hand drive since the rack and pinion is through the middle, but they never did. They only made the 914 in uh, left hand drive. These are the holes for the two master cylinder grommets. They go right down through here to feed the master cylinder. Obviously, the, this is not completely stripped. That's the wiper motor assembly for 914.6. Notice it's squared on the top rather than rounded as a side note. Tappings in the front here. We have the two holes for the front bumper. These have eight by 40 bolts that go through them and they're reinforced. We have the small holes for the front valence or spoiler. We have the, the holes for the driving lights, tap, and we have the hole for the horns. The appearance group cars had two horns. The non-appearance group had one horn. All 914s had, USA versions had serial numbers on the window post like this. The six cylinder sort of rudimentary looked like somebody took a piece of metal and just cut it with snips and stamp the number in here. The 914 four cylinders were more finished and had an edge on them. You can see 914043 So this, since they started at 50, this was about the 117th, uh, 117th, uh, 157th car, something like that done. And this, the 914 is, means it's a six cylinder and then the zero means it's a 1970 model. The early doors before the federal government got involved were extremely, extremely light with no kind of reinforcement inside, just a sound deadening pad, and had an early model, very, very light window mechanism in them for lightness. You can tell the early door versus the late because the obvious thing is the big giant cavity in the back. The late door shrunk the cavity to hold the scissors in them. And the late doors after about serial number 1000 on a 73 had a big heavy side guard and the doors weighed three times as much. Other than that, the doors were the same and any door will fit 8914 if you have the correct window mechanism and the correct vent divider. This 
what we call floor pan tar, was only on six cylinders. The engine noise and the fan noise of the six cylinder coming up through the rocker was pretty deafening. So Porsche knew when they had these cars brought over from Volkswagen that they had to put extra sound deadening in. So this piece, as you can see, is factory cut and factory installed. You can add this to your four cylinder. We do make the kit, but uh, it's not really necessary for the four cylinder. The emergency brake for the early models was what we called a breakaway handle. The top part rested here and then it pivoted right here. In later models, it was so inconvenient that people would leave the brake on because of the handle collapsing, thinking that the brake was off would drive away and burn up the brakes that they discontinued this. So a pure sign of an early car is this peg right here for the handle to rest upon. The seat securing tabs were not on the earliest of 70 models. So if you have a serial number, maybe 600 or so, you won't have these nice little tabs. These were great to secure the carpeting and keep it from moving around. They added those knowing that that was a problem. The rake for the seat tilt is right here. The hinges for the seat rack are right here. When you take the seat out, it'll easily slide out, leaving the rack intact by just lifting the tension clip on the seat. The emergency brake cables come in right here, which attach to an equalizer cable. The engine lid release tube is right here, and it is welded into the back wall off of these rust and have to be replaced. One easy way to tell again that you've got a 7071 car is the affixed seat. Well, the affixed seat is not in this car, so how do I tell? I can tell because there are no hinges right here. There are just permanent brackets to bolt the bucket down. These can be fabricated with bolts and sheet metal if you want to backdate your car to what it should be. Many, many times People like the adjustable seat, so they ended up taking these out and putting an adjustable seat in the 7071 model. And the sixes especially need to go back to their factory original perfection. So very, very important to make these weld them in and get, uh, get rid of the affixed, excuse me, get rid of the movable seat. The bumps in the cross member here actually were for the emergency brake switch. And you can see, again, multi-directional. Maybe Porsche had planned years later to install uh, or come up with a right-hand drive model. This switch over here is covered over because they already put a new piece in there. The, the switch is going to have to be cut into there, but yet the bump is still here. The port here is where the heat comes through the longitudinal, and inside here is a muffler and into the ventilation system. In the rear of the car, the first thing that sticks out is the jack holder right here. The jack in the early cars was in the left rear, and this was 1970, 1971, and 1972 production until 12 of 71. And then again, federal crash standards were a calendar year, so in January 1st of 1972 production, they moved the jack to the front right here. So the 72 body was pretty unique in that it was one that was totally different than the other one. These are the holes for the top latch cups right here. When you put your top in, the latches would fit into here and you turn the handle sideways for a nice fit. This is the hole for the rear trunk compartment light, which is always on when you turn the headlights on. These are the tappings for the front top holders. Later cars had them riveted, but these are tapped. The caulking here, as you can see, is very, very model and is a little cloudy looking. The early cars had it swabbed with a brush. This was stippled on. So one way to tell the early cars, like around 600 serial number from the later cars, is the stippling of the caulk. If it looks brushed, that's a very, very early car. The back panel were the same from 70 until 74. And then for 75, 76, they changed them because of the big bumpers. 
One way to tell whether the car has been hit is to look at this line. It's virtually straight all the way down. If you see it kinked, then you know that the car has been hit in the rear and we always have trunk alignment problems. This big bump here was actually made for the Sportomatic models because their transmission stuck up and if you look at a Sportomatic, it actually has a big hump right here. And this has been caulked over at one time, I can tell because it's not very factory. It's been taken out, put back in and caulked over. This is the stud for the rear transmission ground strap, which is critically important to reinstall when you have the power plant out. This is the stud for installing the spare tire in the rear when you want to pack the trunk full of luggage. This little fork on the rear panel holds the middle of the rear bumper top seal for the 70 through 74 models. If this thing is gone, that usually means that the rear panel has been replaced and you've got no place to support the rear bumper. However, it's easily fabricated. And then you can see the two holes for the rear bumper, reinforced, but yet because it's reinforced, it captured water in between and it's rusted. The rear toe eye, we make this screw in toe eye, it's a beautiful piece that screws into here. Notice this is reinforced so you can actually pull the car from this very strong piece and the holes for the rear valence. The rear quarter panels started out the same in 70, but in 72, they actually made a cut out here because they had had issues with putting on a wire, wider tire and it rubbing. So they took the inner lip and they made a cut out of it in 72 to clear some uh, wider tires, which worked pretty well. Four holes for the side vinyl trim. All of the appearance group cars, including all the six cylinders, had these four holes right here. But unfortunately, for sound deadening, they packed behind the so-called sail panel with foam, which held water and rusted out. As you can see, we have rust here where the foam was behind the, above the door latch. We have rust, which is normally under the sail panel. The sail panel, quarter panel, is all one piece up to here, by the way. And what we're going to have to do to fix this, because we don't, we don't know, we can't just patch this, because we'll end up with it may rust around the fringe, or it may rust here later, it may rust here. We're going to have to cut this whole thing out and probably replace the sail panel with a new piece that we happen to make as well, which really saves us from a lot of intricate little welding that Notice it's about through right here. A little intricate welding that can get us into trouble. We just have to replace the piece, get it over with, and it's done. The door jams were all the same for all the cars, but in 70 and 71, there was not a plug here at all for a vent that came out in uh, late 72. This is for the flow through ventilation. This lets the air coming into the cabin have some place to escape because there aren't any vent windows in this car. Starting again at the front of the car, we see the welded on tow loop, which later was changed to a little bit of an angle because it was hard to access this to grab the car. So they dropped it down just a little bit. And then for the front transverse links, the plate with the three holes in it, the drain hole for the headlight bucket. Make sure periodically you look at this and make sure it's clean because we've seen too many headlight buckets rust out because of it. You can notice how straight and clean these lines are. Again, with the factory spot welds uniformly placed in the bottom of the front panel, we can tell this car has not been hit. Usually the cars will crinkle about right here. If you look up under the fender well and you notice any kind of a crinkling, then you know the car's been hit. Even a frame shot pulling this out sometimes can't get rid of the crinkle. Brake hose holder. Relieved place for the front sway bar. On a six cylinder, maybe a good idea to install a, a front sway bar if you're not concerned with originality because the cars are tail happy and by putting a small front sway bar in, you can make it more neutral. Mountings for the uh, transverse link in the rear, both of them. The master cylinder mounting hole right here, you can see the brake line for it. The fender braces, fender braces to support the fender. 
it to be welded in securely. Notice the the undercoating on here. This is uh, what we call stone guard. It's almost like spray putty. And as you can see, it's not put on very thickly, just a little bit, and it, it peels off. Well, it's, it was on there pretty, pretty tightly, but it'll still peel off. Many undercoated this heavily, but when we redo these cars, we reinstall this putty lightly like this, and we usually end up painting the underside of the car. It's not really correct like it was from the factory. This is correct. Notice it's just, this is actually just fog with a tiny little bit of green. This car was green, but we usually paint the body to give it extra protection. You can see over the years, some of this is chipped off and that leads to rust. This is the reinforcement for the floor pan uh, hinge for the seat. Front or rear, there's one on either side. You can see here also that we've already replaced this piece of the floor pan because there isn't any undercoating on it. These are the early seat belt bolt holes right here. And if we go to the back now, this is a predominant piece. This is the six cylinder engine mount, which none of the four cylinders have. They grab the engine in the middle rather than on the sides like the four cylinder engine. Notice there are no pods here along with a hook for the six cylinder oil line. So that's a dead giveaway that this is a six cylinder just looking from up underneath. And then we have the two floor pan triangle jacking points that we've already replaced here. This is where the heater tubes go in through the longitudinal. And then the two engine shelves. Notice this one has got a hole in it for the six cylinder oil line and this one doesn't, so I can tell, especially from the spot wells, that this is a replacement item. The two fuel lines come up through these two oval holes on the six cylinder, one is plugged. The drain for the engine lid on a four cylinder comes down from here. On a six cylinder, it's plugged. We have the inner and the outer suspension holders. This typically rusts from the battery dripping down and breaks loose and then all of a sudden the tire leans out at the bottom. Serious negative camber and then this piece has to be replaced. This is a part we make. We are in the process of making the three hole outer suspension member as well. And then the longitudinal consisting of two pieces. We have the what we call the outer wheelhouse which starts from right in front of the jack here, goes up and all the way to the back and the battery tray welds to it on the inside. And then we have the inner longitudinal, which is the three sided frame piece, which starts at the back of the trunk and goes all the way down into the front of the car. Well, what happens is the battery area drips because of water hitting the top of it through the grill and it runs downhill and it accumulates right around here. And the next thing we know is that the jack post and the inner frame and the inner rocker start to rust out and then the car sags and the top of the window sticks and the bottom and the top of the door sticks, but you still have a line back here because the car has collapsed. This has all been re-welded so it's hard to tell anything other than the two sill support plates so the sill won't bend, and then the new jack post and support, I can tell that this has been welded because it is just a little bit longer. This will have to be trimmed when it's put back in. And the fact that you can't see the spot welds. The man who did this did a beautiful job. It would be very, very hard to tell that this has been done, especially when it's lightly coated with the factory uh, caulking and painted like we're going to paint. The back of the car has a riveted on muffler shield. That's a dead giveaway of six cylinder. The six cylinder was the only one with a riveted on shield. The Volkswagen factory welded all of these on for the four cylinders knowing they're going to put a four cylinder. But when they sent these to Porsche, the six cylinder muffler was of a different configuration. So they sent the bodies without them and Porsche then screwed on their own muffler support shield. Two rear transmission mounts. Again, the stud critical for the grounding of the power plant right here. The two plugs, they were anticipating a 
rear sway bar. This is actually the plug for the mounting of the rear sway bar bracket right here. And the two shock towers, as you can see on either side, the support for the rear quarter. Make sure this is on or the quarter is going to uh, move. What I talked about earlier is the cut in this fender. Notice this fender is all uniform along here. The later ones had a cut that went about to right there so that the wider tire could fit on. Two things on the left inner fender well. First, all 914s are stamped to install an oil tank. If you look at your 914, you'll find blanks here. There are no holes on your 914. You can see the blanks. Porsche anticipated making many, many six cylinders, so all these inner panel, panels were stamped. Only the six cylinders had the holes cut out for oil tank mounting, like the filler spout and the, uh, the bottom lines that came off the tank and the upper breather line. Secondly, this is amazing. This has an original rear hinge pivot mount that hasn't been broken. These were welded on with three spot welds on either side, and then the trunk hinge bolted to this, and then they were put under tension. Well, the trunk hinge bolted on via a shoulder bolt that the hinge actually pivoted on, and nobody ever lubricated it. So the bolt welded to the hinge, and then the next thing we knew, it broke this pivot off, and the trunk lid would pop up on the one side, and what looked like it could be a simple repair for misalignment ended up a very extensive welding job, and having to unspring and respring these torsion bars that were in here was really quite the task. And then we have seen so many sloppy repairs of these rather than the good three spot welds on either side. And also misplacement of this, which resulted in the trunk lid off, unable to be adjusted and then shimmed or washered up, or I've even seen them cut and trimmed, which is a big nightmare. We have in our trunk hinge cup replacement instructions, the exact template of where this should go. And as you can see, it's almost about a quarter of an inch off and just about touching the bottom of the auxiliary grill support. On the, uh, on the battery side, battery tray and support, these all have holes in them for the later, the replacements for the later dual relay and resistor block that the 1.8's bolted on. So by looking at this, I can tell instantly that it's a replacement battery tray. Up there is the ground lead for the battery, critically important to have that clean, and then the other trunk hinge cup. These battery trays and supports always rusted away. It's hard, it's hard to even find a 914 with an original one. And again, the acid washed down into the well. Notice the drain here. They, the factory actually plugged this with a weep rubber to where they thought that if it had enough water, then it would open and let the water drain out. Well, debris got in there and clogged it, like putting a finger over it. This filled up with debris and acid and wiped this area out, totally wiped it out, caught the frame. We've seen frames rusted out, the engine mounting pods and the four cylinders rusted out, even the back of the firewall rusted out, a major welding repair that takes hours to do right. So by all means, if you haven't done it now, maintain your battery and watch it periodically. Make sure that the voltage regulator is not overcharging because that washes the accident out of the battery and keep the area dry. Thank you very much for listening to my tour of Body and Blank. I'm George Hussey, Dr. 914 from Ottawa.